How do I buy a rental property? Let's get into it. Hey there, I'm Clayton Morris, the founder and president of Morris Invest. We're the largest turnkey rental provider in the country, and we're so excited to have you back for another episode. Today, I want to talk to you about how to buy a rental property. Uh, it seems like a, a simple enough question, but it can throw off a lot of people. You hit some speed bumps along the way, and you think, am I doing this right? Well, I've mapped out seven different points here that I want to take you through on how to buy your first rental property. Uh, let's start with number one. First of all, I think people always want to start you know, in the middle somewhere, and you need to define what it is you want. So step one is define what it is you want. What are your goals? You want to find out, well, what state do I want to buy the property in? Do you want to buy it in your own backyard, or do you want to invest across state lines? So you need to first set your goals down on paper. How many properties do you want to acquire? What is your goal for real estate investing? Without a goal, you're going to wander off the path. You're going to start thinking, maybe I should flip houses. Maybe I should, uh, I don't know, get involved in mobile home investing or <laughs> whatever it is. If you don't have a clear goal when you start out, then you are going to go off the beaten path. So step one, have a clear goal, write it down, and then it will start to come to fruition. It's pretty amazing how that works. Step two is to find the property. And there are multiple ways to find a property. Okay, the most obvious way is to contact a real estate agent in the market you want to acquire this rental property. And you want to be specific in what you want and what are you are looking for in this property. And we'll get to step three in a second, which will give you some better numbers here. But you could reach out to a realtor and let them know what your intentions are, how much money you're looking to spend, and how many rental properties you'd like to acquire and get that person on your team. You probably will have to go through quite a few realtors before you find one that is a good fit for you. Sit down, go to, you know, go to lunch, go sit down over coffee and have them print out some different listings and kind of go through those numbers and see if any of them are a fit for you. That's one way to contact a realtor. Another way is to simply pick up the phone, which is something that I would do. Uh, trying to find off-market properties, ones where you can actually get a higher return on your investment, uh, where you're not going to have to deal with a realtor. My father's a realtor, so I have nothing against them. It's just that you are going to get a higher bang for your buck if you're able to become creative in your approach to finding properties. So pick up the phone. What do I mean? Go to Craigslist and look in the for sale by owner section of Craigslist and see if any of those sellers are willing to negotiate. Sit down, find out. Maybe they are motivated and you can get a better deal on that property. And in fact, you may even find that they will sell or finance the property. So maybe they have 10 rental properties and they know that if they sell the property right now, they're going to pay enormous capital gains taxes on the sale of that property. Well, Maybe they'll give you seller financing. What does that mean? That means they might construct a note, a mortgage, where you then, they are the mortgage holder on the property, and they are basically selling it to you for terms. It's a fantastic way to acquire your first rental property, using seller financing. That way you might not even have to come out of your own pocket for any cash up front, and you're able to get a property on the backs of the seller. Now, it's a win-win because you get the property, you get to now experience the cash flow and taking care of this property, you own the property, and the seller doesn't have to pay huge capital gains taxes. That's a win for him. Absolutely a home run if you can find them. Now, you just have to do some digging. Get out there, go on Craigslist, or you could even consider doing some direct mail in a zip code that you would like to target. So all of these things, we're going to dive in deeper to all of those subjects on future videos. But just for now, know that there are multiple ways to find that rental property. And number three is ROI, return on investment. Now, I have a whole video, which the little thing up here, a little card, you can click on and we deep dive how to figure out ROI. But for now, just know that we need to make sure that we're focused on our numbers, return on investment. That's why we're in this game in the first place. I don't care about the cute, adorable little bungalow that we're going to buy. All that matters is that we're getting a high return on investment and really make sure you know what numbers you're looking for. You can sit down with a real estate agent and say, I will not consider a property unless I can make 10 to 12% ROI whatever it happens to be. We recently went through this with a realtor we were working with in one of our markets. Uh, they kept sending us properties to consider and I said, look, I have to be honest with you, I am not going to touch the property unless I hit these certain numbers. And they stopped sending me all these fluffy properties and they started sending me specific properties that I could consider and I ended up buying uh, two of them. 
So you need to be very specific about your ROI, but really make sure you understand that. And again, the little video up here, you can click on it. It will take you into some deeper diving on how to figure out your return on investment number. Number four, take action. You've got to take action. I like to say that if you are 80% sure of something, then take action. You're never going to be 100% sure of anything. As long as your numbers are in sync and certain factors are in line and you are sticking with your goal that you set out in step one, then just do it. Just take action. Again, you're never going to be 100% sure of anything in your life. So just do it and you'll reap the rewards. Trust me. Number five, get an inspection. Once you take action and you make an offer on the property and it's accepted, get an inspection on the property. This is a great way for you to find out what rehab and renovations you are going to need to do on the property. So you may need to hire a contractor uh, to come in and spend 10, 15, 20 thousand dollars on your renovation. Uh, make sure that you get an inspection so you know what to expect. But Again, I have another great video on inspections. Don't go crazy and think that you have to do everything in that inspection report, okay? Inspectors are paid to nitpick, and you need to know how much money you're willing to spend to get that property in great living condition for a tenant, but not overdoing it and spending way too much money on little nitpicky things that inspectors are paid to find. So get an inspection, it gets it down on paper, you know what to expect, and then you can take action. Number six on my list of how to buy a rental property is find a great property management team. Okay, this is very important. I've worked with some stinkers in the past and now I work with great property management teams who will do full background checks on our tenants, criminal background checks, they look for evictions in their history, uh, late payments in their history, they'll check with previous landlords to make sure they pay on time. Most importantly, they will collect the rent checks and they will also take care of the property. If you are living out of state, this is very important because you're not gonna be there to see it. So you're gonna have to have a great property management team that's going to drive by the property, it's gonna make sure that it's rented and that uh, they are collecting rent checks on a regular basis. So find a great property management team, one that you can stand by and work with long term. Also, make sure that they don't nickel and dime you. Uh, the property managers we work with don't nickel and dime you. So if there's a big thunderstorm and uh, they need to drive out to the property to see if there's branches laying on the roofs or whatever, that some property management teams will charge you like $70 just to do a site visit. Not the property management teams that we partner with and work with, absolutely not. They do a great job and that's why we continue to work with them. And number seven, and finally, just rinse and repeat. So go through those first six steps again and do it all over again. You've got that first property, you've got it out of the way, great. Don't sit and rest on your laurels. Now rinse and repeat, start the process over again. Pick up the phone or work with a, uh, a turnkey property provider who's gonna get you a great property. Get that second, third, fourth property. Call that realtor. Get your rehab and contractors out there and start renovating your next property. There's so many great ways to make money with rental investing. It is an absolute game changer. And I hope that you will take action and get out there and buy your first rental property. I'm Clayton Morris. I'm so excited that you subscribed to the channel. If you haven't already, please click the subscribe button. You can drop us a little like. Hit the little like button too if you like this video. And we publish videos multiple times a week. I'm so excited to have you here. We'll see you on the next video, everyone.